Yes. Okay. I'm good. I'll call the Board of County Commissioners meeting for Custer County to order. Let the record show today is June 20th. The time is 12 o'clock noon. And we are meeting at the San Isabel Lodge. Um, let's see. I just think we should maybe see if the sheriff would like to lead us in a pledge of allegiance. The flag is to my left. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, sir. He remembered my pleasure entirely. Oh, well, good. Uh, Madam Secretary, would you call the roll, please? Commissioner Flower. Present. Present. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, any amendments to the agenda, Mr. Prince? I have none. Um, I'm going to move this microphone over here a little. Audience introduction. Would you like to start? Linda Washington. Starting to be the school something. Cindy Flower. Shannon Byerly, Sheriff. Sure. Cindy Byron. Howard, Emergency Management. Thank you. It's a lunch, kind of a lunch meeting, so don't you know when I ask for introduction, some people are right in the middle of a bite. <laughs> um, Approval of the minutes, May 31, June 7, and June 8. Uh, uh, Commissioner Prince, have you had an opportunity to look at those? I did, sir. I read them. Um, I would move that we approve the minutes for January 7th, January 8th, and May 31st. Thank you, sir. I'll second the motion. Uh, it's been moved and seconded to approve the minutes from May 31, June 7, and June 8. Discussion? just like to compliment Kelly one more time for a okay. comprehensive job. Thank you. Yeah. And I know they uh, had a little mistake in there, corrected it, and sent out a new one, so we should be good to go. Uh, hearing no further discussion, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carries. <laughs> How about it? That's your gavel? Yeah, that's my new gavel. Uh, commissioner items? <clears throat> Do you have anything, sir? Well, I can tell you what I did. Uh, I, I met with the uh, uh, Department of Human Services in the school on June 8th, and then we met again on uh, June 17th. Um, the tourism board meeting was on the 12th. Um, we had the planning and zoning workshop on the 13th. On the 14th, there was a conflict um, for me. Um, I knew that the economic development meeting um, at 5.30 was being attended by both you and Commissioner Kander, so I attended the Custer County Kids Workshop. It was excellent. It was a three-hour workshop. It went in late to the night, it seemed. Um, so I was absent from one and went to the other. Um, the school board meeting on 17, like I said. Then I had a meeting with uh, Greg Smith on June 18th to discuss vacancies and other issues with the tourism board and that's what i've done since the last meeting okay good 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 uh before i go through my calendar <clears throat> i think i will bring the round mountain water and sanitation district site application <laughs> up under commissioner items um i think we uh could probably handle this as a consent item but <clears throat> greg medeiros had sent us the site application that he sent into CDPHE. Uh, we received that in April. I think the date was April the 3rd. And he came by and wanted to know if we were in a position to sign the site agreement or the site application, <coughs> which basically 
the application asked if the county had reviewed the site application and also if the proposal conflicted with the master plan of the county and and that is <coughs> excuse me that is the basic uh, two points that were made in the in the site application itself so he was hoping to get that sign and get it sent off to CDPHE as soon as he could. So if you're okay, sir, uh, I don't know if we need a motion to that effect or if I can just sign that. Um, Counselor, do you have a, an opinion on that? Did I, did I send that to you, uh, Dick Brenda? I didn't I'm sorry, I, didn't then. I dropped Only the ball. 150 pages. Yeah. It's a fairly lengthy document. Um, I wouldn't have read it anyway. Before you say that, tell me I'll cover it. Yeah, up the yeah, we can lay a napkin over the. Um, Why don't you do it by motion just to make it official? Yeah, and the problem with that is we did not have it on the agenda. Are we no. okay to do that under commissioner items or not? Is it going to come back to bite us? Uh, no, I don't believe so. I mean, it was basically, and I, let me back up. I mean, it, it does say, or George said, you know, the intent that you're signing off on here really is that either, if you don't sign off on it, then there must be a problem with meeting, going against the master plan. So I talked to Jackie Hobby as well, and uh, she said no. It, the other thing, it's almost a moot point because it's within the, the city limits of Westcliff. It's not in the county. Okay. So we really don't even have jurisdiction. George Medeiros also told me that it's really that document was designed for counties that had 10 or 12 small water districts in them and that one wasn't encroaching on another and so on and so forth. So no, you don't I don't to, really think it's don't need anything. To do it so by emotion with your consent, sir, I would just sign that and get that to him. Actually, he has it, but uh, the application, I was just going to pull that up real quick if you wanted to look at it. Um, I think it's page 21. Uh, let me just look real quick here. And this was the front of it, Jay. Did you get... Oh yeah, yeah okay. I actually you read ninety percent of it. Got that oh, April third. Yeah. Or March? No, April third. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, uh, let me I, just, I read the majority of it, believe yeah. it or not. Some of it, I mean I know it had when I saw the maps and stuff on it, I thought, yeah, this is the document that that I had gone through. Let me see what page we're on. The hundred and twelve pages. Yeah, but there's some pictures. Yeah, that's true. There are pictures. Uh, I'm trying to find the actual wording on that to read to you real quick, Clint. But it's true. It's true. Yeah, that's I right. That. I got it in front of me. Okay. Get the page number. It starts on page it's appendix A, I think. On page heaven only knows. There aren't page numbers, are there? Uh, no, uh, there are up at the top. Try page seventeen. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Is that, well, is that not it? Well, uh, mine's being weird for some reason. There we go. Okay, thank you, sir. Appreciate your help. Yeah, so it's the uh, Regulation 22 application form and then the 
No, that is not it. That's the that's under the engineering report. Oh yeah, there it is, right? Okay. So the uh, by signing below the entity or agency acknowledged receipt of the proposed site location app has reviewed the app and uh, may elect to provide any comments. Uh, and then with this document would be providing a recommendation concerning the application to the water division or to the CDPHE. Um, so if you're okay with that, sir, I will move forward and uh, get with George tomorrow. I will verbalize yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right. Uh, and what's, it, what's the document? This is for Round Mountain Water and Sanitation District's application to the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment. For and it's all about their proposed location of the new wastewater treatment facility, which is going to be right where the existing lagoons are. So the structure is going to change, but the use doesn't change. So. The actual document, if you want, for the record, is called the Site Application Report. Yeah. If you want to. Oh. Okay, thank you for asking that. Good. Um, okay. Did you want to do And then, yeah, and then with that, I'll uh, go through my calendar real quick since our last uh, board meeting. Uh, I am happy to report that Justify did win the Kentucky Derby. <laughs> Uh, we had a Lincoln Day dinner out at the uh, Grange Hall on the 9th of June. Um, and then on June 11th, I attended a fire uh, prevention meeting down at our local fire department. Uh, it was a good meeting, kind of ran by Dennis Page, and, and there it was interesting. The, the federal government has decided that in response to some fire events that they are going to fund teams of three or four or five people to go into communities and preach the fire prevention message, basically, is that what you think? And so they had four people there. I think the guy in the back was with that group, wasn't he? So there were four three ladies and a gentleman there and uh, and they were in our community at least that day if not part of the next and uh, passing out some flyers and just trying to educate people talk to people almost door to door in the businesses uh, about fire prevention fire mitigation that kind of thing so that was interesting that the feds had decided we better start throwing some money at a little more money at prevention anyway and uh, well, it was, a, it was a good meeting. Uh, then on the 12th, as Commissioner Prince indicated, we had a tourism board meeting. Uh, we also had a weed board meeting that day. And then there was a uh, ready, set, go fire prevention mitigation meeting in Wetmore that evening, 5.30, Cindy Howard. Uh, gave her presentation to the folks down in the Wetmore area and uh, felt like that was certainly well worth going down and following up with that. Um, and then on the 13th we had our zoning resolution workshop. I believe you mentioned that, didn't you, sir? Uh, on the 14th I met with the school district and the Department of Human Services then Commissioner Prince also was at that meeting, and then uh, I attended the Upper Arkansas Water Conservancy District meeting in Salida on the 14th, and also attended the uh, broadband study proposal, the uh, job study proposal that the company we hired out of Canada, they were in town and gave a proposal on the 14th and then again on the 15th and I attended both of those meetings as well. Um, and then uh, on 
on the 19th, obviously, which was yesterday. Uh, Sheriff Barley, myself, Kit Shy, Cindy Howard, sorry, uh, met and discussed the situation surrounding the fireworks and Kit's suggestion to Sheriff Byerly as our, our fire officer was that we do not have those fireworks on the 4th of July. Everyone in attendance agreed because of the obvious uh, weather conditions and so Kit put out a press release yesterday afternoon uh, to that effect that we will not have the fireworks display at Lake Deweese on the 4th of July. And he also encouraged people to continue to support all aboard West Cliff because they're the funding agent for that 4th of July fireworks. And, uh, and they usually ask for donations the night of the 4th out of Lake Deweese. Well, that opportunity is going to go by the wayside, and that was their major fundraising activity of the year. So... Um, Kit asked in his press release to consider, to encourage people to consider supporting all aboard Westcliff, <clears throat> even though they're not going to have their fundraising opportunity out there. And I was going to give you that, uh, that website. <coughs> I'll have to pull that up real quick. Let's see. Um, I'm not sure if it was. Was that the website? Yeah, I've got it in front of me if you want. If you, yes, if you don't mind. Okay. Do you want me to just read the, the web yeah, address? Yeah, you can read it loud enough. So that, yeah. I will do my best. Yeah. It is https colon forward slash forward slash, thank you, dear, www.gofundme, one word, dot com forward slash, NNXVWV dash July dash fourth with a TH dash fireworks. Wow. It's on the web page as well, county website. Yeah, that's. I thought he no. said he was, was putting it on there. Put it on there. I don't, I don't it's on I Facebook haven't, as well. Yeah, it's on Facebook too. Okay. I haven't looked on the web page, but we were told it was going to be there. Okay. Yeah, that is so. GoFundMe.com and then look up basically July 4th. Yes. July. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Thank you, sir. I did find mine, but thank you for doing that. I don't see it on the front page at least. Okay. He may not have it posted up yet. So. <clears throat> uh, and then last night, no or and then we had our. Custer Emergency Services meeting at 2 o'clock yesterday afternoon over at the Search and Rescue Building. Um, and we, I, I should have brought it up yesterday and I failed to do that, but I want to keep this tower, proposed tower site lease with AT&T on the front burner because they're on the agenda for the 29th. I, yesterday would have been a great time to talk about that with everybody involved, but... Um, we can, I can talk about that actually later. So, and then last night we had the Custer County Republican Central Committee meeting, and so that kind of covers what I've been doing. Uh, anything else, sir, Commissioner Item? Uh, about the tower. Oh, thank you. Yes, another item I want to bring up uh, under Commissioner Items is. Uh, to follow up on the email that we received, uh, all three commissioners uh, received from Shannon Off, the county extension agent. She has resigned effective June 22nd, which is this Friday, uh, citing personal reasons. Uh, and she said it was fine for me to, to explain publicly that her dad had suffered a stroke back in Virginia and she didn't have any other family members there in the area to deal with that. So uh, I think there were some other 
issues, uh, personal issues, but uh, she did resign, and I have spoken with <coughs> Bill Nobles, the uh, area director for extension, and he assured me first and foremost that CSU is going to stand behind us 100% in moving forward with our county fair, with the 4-H program, and with uh, trying to hire a new extension agent. So he felt like we could get a job posting put up by within three weeks, and he felt comfortable that we should be able to have a new agent hired in September. So I just thought that was great news compared to the timeline that we dealt with previously. Uh, it was well over a year or so. If we can get that kind of turnaround with CSU, uh, he's confident. I've talked to him about a couple of other things, uh, some possibilities to help us out in the interim. He was going to visit with Lou Swanson, who is the director of 4-H uh, for the state, <clears throat> and uh, probably get back to me tomorrow about that. So uh, he thought we could get us an interim person in place to help sign documents, sign entry forms for this, these fairs, uh, National Western, Kansas City, Arizona, National Livestock Show, and those kind of things. So if, uh, if for some reason we were beyond that September deadline, I would imagine those entry fees will have to be in that August, September time frame. So he said, I, I just don't want you guys to worry about it. He said, we're in good shape. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um we had a wonderful group of people, in my opinion, who filled in last time when we were vacant until we got Ms. Ort to full-time. Um, can we consider either those same people or some other interim group that we could coerce, hire on a part-time basis to come in and kind of bridge the gap? I know how important this is for our community, and I certainly don't want people to start freaking out that we're not going to have a fair and we're not going right. to do the things we need? Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, I, I spoke to Bill about that a little bit, and he said what, what they'd really like to see happen is us get an interim extension That's agent. That's what I'm talking about. And, and one person come in and do that job until we get the full-time position hired rather than try to team up with two or three different people. Uh, I know Sarah Shields was very involved as an interim 4-H uh, director last year, uh, Beverly came in as part of that extension thing, and I'm hoping we do not have to go that route, that we can just hire an interim extension agent and keep right on moving forward. I'm so fine with that. To I me, just, that would be just, the ideal I don't situation. Want the, I don't want the seat empty until September if we could exactly. avoid that. Yeah. No, I, I agree with you 100%. And, uh, I spoke to uh, a couple of officers of the fair board yesterday, and and, you know, our general conversation was obviously the fair board is going to put on this fair. We should not miss a lick. Uh, Bill Nobles also thought, if nothing else, they would authorize uh, Diana Cox Singer as a signatory on some documents if we have to. So I just don't see a big, big bump in the road. Uh, I know Shannon felt terrible about the timing. And uh, you know, it is what it is. Always <clears throat> she indicated to Bill Nobles and the commissioners that she would be available through the 22nd via email. She is back in Virginia, so uh, she has gone back and said she would be available up until uh, close of business on the 22nd. So we'll move forward with that. Hopefully we can get those things taken care of. Uh, and it, Just a quick update on this commissioner item. I want to throw it out there, I'll put it up, if it's not already on the 29th agenda, that tower, IGA, I think it is. Um, the company representing AT&T is still uh, anxious to move forward with leasing some county property for a AT&T tower. Uh, I believe their, their impetus is FirstNet. I think that's what they're trying to get to, is to be the first player with FirstNet. Uh, a couple of things I wanted to share with you, and I communicated him as late as this morning or with him via email. Um, we have looked at what our average monthly AT&T bill is, 
and so we were thinking about that being a basis to start negotiations for uh, a lease cost. And then they've also asked us to pick a site within a footprint that they've marked out on the county property between the search and rescue building and uh, the courthouse and said we would like you to tell us where you would would prefer to put the tower and then we will go from there from the negotiation standpoint. So right now I haven't had a chance to visit with Cindy about this today but I did visit with Sheriff Byerly a little. Uh, it, they're asking for a 50 by 50 footprint, 50 by 50 foot footprint uh, and it, it kind of looks like maybe just south of the exercise yard for the jail. There's a significant area there that may work. What Evan Brooks was hoping that we could give them enough direction so that they, he could, his company could go back to AT&T, sort out a lot of the little stuff, and then when they come on the 29th, make a, a final presentation to us, and then hopefully if we don't vote then, at least we've got all the information we need to vote uh, subsequent to that. So. Um, I don't know how we, without setting in a meeting or a workshop and getting everybody's opinions other than maybe through email, uh, just circulate that and I believe I sent that to you, you today. Did. So I will continue to try to gather information, at least to give him enough information so that he can have an idea. Instead of showing up on the 29th, he comes down from Denver to say, okay, I don't have any, I, I can't answer any questions because I didn't know what they were. He can't make those decisions. He, he's a liaison between AT&T and us, so uh, they have hired him, his company, to do that. <clears throat> so that's kind of where we're at. I don't know. Uh, the helipad, if that's in the work down the road, is a little bit of, a, of an issue. Uh, he did look, uh, the FCC, FAA reg, sorry, because there is no helipad now, this proposed tower would not fall under any guidelines for that. Once the tower is up, then we decide to put a helipad in. We'll walk around it. He's not sure, but he thinks that that would kind of be a grandfathered situation. And at least then we know where the tower was, or is going to be. They may not have it up by then, but who knows. Um, but they're talking about 120 feet, which would fall under the height uh, restrictions for FAA for lights and to be lit but uh, and they are talking did you have a chance to look at that picture Jay they're talking about a I single did. pole big metal I did pole, the, um, I no that. guy wires uh, just you know big pole set on a concrete pad so I don't know Cindy do you have any feeling um, about that I know you've communicated with me some but I started to reply to the email today but I okay. thought I'd hold off a little yeah. bit. So one, I was curious, you know, what was going to happen with the existing tower. Um, then on the first net issue, I was curious what our costs are anticipated to go up to. He's not going to have that answer, but if we're, you know, the $1,200 may cover the county's costs now, but right. if we all have to upgrade to smartphones and the service is much more expensive, that might be something we want to look at, and then it may cover the county costs, but what about EMS and fire and let more fire and I, it's still pretty unclear to me how all these other agencies yeah. like search and rescue afford to be first net players because nobody's going to pay my personal bill. Yeah, and that and the first net conversation is for obvious reasons is not really in the mix now. We were right. just looking at at a point just, to start the negotiations on a lease price and and just trying to get the big picture. And then yeah. we talked a little bit about it at CES about getting someone in to figure out if that radio tower is really causing interference or if it's more because the radios are out of tune or a mix and then also would this microwave site pose potential health issues or other radio interference issues and I really think we've got to figure out some of the answers to those questions um, before we act, you know we create another problem and trying to, yeah. to solve one. Yeah he said uh, in an email that uh, the frequencies obviously would be FCC regulated and those frequencies that they're talking about on their tower would not interfere with ours. Uh, he also, pardon? 
Yeah, I mean, those cell towers, they're pretty limited in their yeah. bandwidth, so yeah. that's not the bleed over, I think. Yeah, I think we have some other issues. It's, the, it's the conjunction uh, all three of those. If you put a, a phone tower there, then, then the tower of the sheriff's office, which operates all the DTR radios and, and mm -hmm. a bunch and of VHF and I mean, all that. And then you have the radio station right there in the star building. All of that RF that's right. so saturated, I think that's the bigger yeah. challenge. Yeah, and I, this may not be a solution to what you're talking about, but I did have a conversation with him about uh, putting some equipment on their tower. Initially, it started out if we put, if we allowed AT&T to put a tower where one of our towers is now, that they would put our equipment on their tower uh, included in part of the deal, that we, so we wouldn't have two towers right there side by side may still be a possibility if we're south of the sheriff's office uh, that we could do away with that other tower. I don't know if it would be worthwhile or not, but uh, the, the radio tower at Search and Rescue Building, I think, is another issue. And I think we need to have to look at that because I think we're getting, yeah, the transmitter. I think we're getting some interference from that. And uh, as I mentioned at meeting yesterday before the CES meeting, John Genovese is kind of a resident expert in that deal. 47 years in the industry said he would start looking to see if he could help us find somebody that could come and give us a study. Someone else mentioned the radio station owner out of Raton that said it's not properly filtered, but again, we need a subject matter expert right. to help us yeah. so I'm, resolve those issues. I'm hoping, you know, John maybe can get us connected to somebody who can look into that. But So that's uh, that's all I have, and I'm sorry to drag on there, but... Uh, <laughs> <coughs> Whatever happened to our helipad? There was a helipad supposed to be part of the clear. Yeah, I, 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 I always thought they were going to replace the one out north, the Dan Riggs Memorial Helipad, with one there by the clinic, but it never happened. So uh, I think that's back in the conversation, at least, to see uh, what we could do about a helipad. Attorney items, Mr. Smith? <clears throat> well, I attended the Planning Commission workshop we had last week. Um, I did some scrambling at the last minute. Uh, that runway testing at the airport was scheduled to be done last Thursday, and I had to get in a, a last minute agreement with the Ot Six Ranch uh, for the 14,000. They agreed to pay seven, and the county paid seven, and that money should uh, be in the treasuries. Okay, uh, I didn't ask general you, but fund, but they were yeah. the Mr. Watts said he was mailing the check the same day. Uh, I worked with uh, Ann Barthrop on the land acquisition for the Criminal Justice Center. Talked with her and talked with the attorney representing um, <coughs> the individual who owns some land we're looking at. Nothing's been resolved there yet. Um, <coughs> at the last minute yesterday, I reviewed. Uh, some proposed changes to the open burning ordinance that Shannon and Cindy had been working on. I didn't have a whole lot to contribute on that. I feel kind of bad that I wasn't more involved in that. But, um, and that's about all I've done since our last meeting. Okay. Uh, thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Administrative assistant items? I don't have anything today. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, staff reports, I don't believe we have any, nor I don't uh, believe we have any unfinished business, so we'll move on to new business. Um, we had Paul Crespin on the agenda to give us an update on the Forest Service. Uh, I think we will skip over that for now, and then if he shows up, we can certainly uh, give him time on the agenda. <clears throat> so I'd like to move on to the fire ban extension. Uh, we we had a fire ban in place. It expired, I think, two days ago. Um, yeah. Whether anyone knows it, it or not, it's still in place. Yeah. Uh, 30 days from May 16th, so actually it was a little more than two days. But um, 
So, Sheriff Barley, your recommendation, sir, on fire stage two fire restrictions for our county? It needs to stay in place uh, to stay. I mean, conditions are no better, and it could rain for a week straight. I don't know that conditions would get better in that period of time. All the counties that are adjacent to us are all in stage twos at this point. BLM, Forest Service, um, and there's already started to be some some brief discussion anyhow from the Forest Service about a possible stage three if we do not uh, get some moisture. Yeah, the ERC number just keeps yeah. doing its thing. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're the levels that no one's ever seen. Almost record level. At this time of year. Ener ERC energy release component and uh, which really is a fancy term for the amount of moisture that's in all this fuel wood laying yeah. standing on the forest floor. So, um, yeah, we're about to the point where if anybody rubs their hands together much, mm -hmm. it's going to start fire. Uh, and I spoke with Fire Chief Shy, he concurs obviously with that whole assessment as well. So, uh, I would move that we extend the stage two fire ban for Custer County. Uh, by resolution and we have prepared a resolution in the event that this uh, motion passes um, beginning today and running for the next 30 days. I'll second that motion. Thank you sir. It's been moved and seconded to uh, extend the fire ban, stage two fire ban for Custer County. Uh, with resolution number 18-11. Discussion? Uh, my hope is is that by the time we get to July and may have to re uh, to address this again, that we're about ready to, to put in front of you a revised burn plan and options, which may then, depending on Dictate what, what your do. opinions are, where we may not have to do this every 30 days, instead change it to where once you put the resolution in, it's reviewed every 30 days, but no, it stays in, in place unless there's yeah. a motion made to rescind it. Right. We wouldn't have to write a resolution every, yeah, 30, every days. 30 days. I don't think that was, makes it a little smoother and a little more uh, proactive and, and usable. So. Okay. Good. Thank you. Further comment from the public? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carries. Uh, yeah, that's right. I like it. Get out of the Yeah, bang on one of those. <laughs> so I'll give that to Mr. Prince for his signature, and then we'll give it to Kelly, and then we can get it to Mr. Kanda and get his signature on it. Thanks. Yeah, don't put it in the salsa. Uh, <laughs> can you imagine down the road somebody says, this, this document looks like it has salsa on it. <laughs> uh, um, other business to come before the Board of Commissioners at this time. I think if we could keep all our meetings this show, we ought to meet here every time. <laughs> um, is you, that a motion? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you happen to have an opportunity to speak with Paul Crespin recently? I mean, did not, okay. not, not in the last. I haven't either. I didn't know. I just knew he was asked to be on the agenda, and so I think uh, if he was going to be here, he'd have probably been here. So. I spoke. Yeah, he might have been here at night. <laughs> yeah. I spoke to Dennis yesterday. Yeah. Not yeah. Okay. I haven't heard any okay. major changes other than they just keep they've been <clears throat> crews out and about all the time. You see them driving around there. Okay. They're we lucked out with no dry lightning last week. Like they, I mean there was a little bit nothing yeah. like they predicted. Yeah. Uh, any, no rain that they predicted either. Any public comment come before the board? Um I I, just to give you a heads up, um, I'm going to try, I'm hoping to maybe get on the agenda. I haven't talked to a friend yet on the 29th. Um, so I've been, um, as you probably are aware, been talking with the school pretty extensively and kind of planning on a way that we can increase school security 
over there during the school year. <clears throat> um, the the more we look at grants and grant opportunities, the the slimmer our opera. You know, the reality is that we we're probably going to get a grant, but the school did make a, a, a significant financial um, commitment move towards towards that. Um, they've allocated about twenty five thousand dollars for next year. The next school year, so from August to May, <clears throat> and uh, I think the best approach for us would be, yes, sir. There's sorry, a question on your face, good. It is, but I, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, that's okay. So I, I'm thinking the best approach that we're going to have to this because obviously, twenty-five thousand dollars doesn't pay for come close to paying for another deputy or another full-time person. But what we can do is uh, through our off-work program or off-duty work program. Uh, what we're going to do is, uh, and I've worked with Donna Hobby, the finance uh, director, to make sure that uh, we can we can make this work. But what it'll be is uh, on the deputies' days off, their regular days off, um, they will work at the school on an hourly wage, and then the and then we will submit a bill to the school every month, and they'll turn around and uh, pay for those the time that that uh, deputy uh, was at work. They won't be any cost to the county other than the fact that even though they're on their days off they are working as a sheriff's deputy there and so they would be on our you know for uh, um, insurance purpose for workman's comp those type of things they would still be there and then of course if anything significant did happen they would come on duty as a regular deputy to make sure that um, was covered there so we should be able to do that with very little to no cost to the county at all um, other than some paperwork stuff, you know, which just goes with the territory. So okay. um, we're working on the MOU with the school and the contract and all that. And so hopefully we'll iron some of that out, uh, so give it to Clint for his uh, once over and approval. And we'll, I'll come to you with the, <coughs> that proposal. Okay. So just something for you to think about. Yeah. Good, good. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention quickly, too, is tomorrow we are having a uh, audit review and a budget workshop uh, with the commissioners and our finance uh, officer. So, at nine o'clock. Uh, pardon me, nine, nine o'clock, nine a.m. Yes. In our room. Yes, in the commissioner's room in Westcliff. Uh, for the public comment, having no executive session, uh, chair will adjourn this meeting. Let the record show it's twelve forty-two. PM. So Motion. Food and a short meeting. Adjourn. Pretty hard to beat that. Right there. Yeah, well.